Okay, so I've got a few things to do. Um, I've made a few notes of what I want to do in this session, uh, and we'll see how far we get. Uh, let me just get rid of these. Right. So we've got our new container defined, um, and that is. Oops, uh, Uh, that's defined uh, here. Uh, one thing we haven't done yet is get it under control. If you remember, we've got uh, the script, these three scripts, check in and out, which are built by that Docker file into a container. And that container will then be used as a resource type. Um, now, we haven't tested these yet. And one thing I know is wrong with this at the moment is that when the Docker file is built, sorry, when the image is built from the Docker file, uh, the assets, although they're copied in, uh, are not uh, set to be executable. Uh, so in order to get that done, uh, the easiest way is to uh, actually let's do a continuation and then it's gonna do chmod plus x for everything in opt resource Oops. Now, why do it here rather than uh, in uh, rather than chmodding the uh, scripts themselves? Well, of course you could, uh, but the the main point of failure is going to be when they're actually put into the container itself. So, in this way, if I ever added another resource, uh, it would get automatically chmodded. I don't have to remember to do it, and. Uh, I think it's a, an easier way of ensuring it all works. We don't need them to mod plus X here because we're not going to test them in this context. We're only going to test them in the context of the uh, uh, in the context of the container. So uh, actually, uh, probably better off doing it down here. Uh, because uh, uh, then it is salty vagrant uh, URI results. Right, so now we should be able to do something like uh, run, uh, interactive. Oh, uh, actually, while we're on this uh, subject, you'll notice that I've created this test JSON file, uh, which is really just a JSON type of thing that we're expecting it to send to us uh, when it's run by the concourse. Okay, so. So this hopefully will be uh, a test. Oops. Too much crap on my desk. Uh, can I move that right out? There we go. Okay. So we're going to run it with resource. We're going to run it with the command uh, opt resource. Uh, and what we're going to check is check, and we're going to take that test JSON file and feed it in to the standard input. Let's see what happens. And look at that. So we can see it's done the check uh, of this URI, uh, which we have done up here. Okay, so this URI here, 
Uh, okay, uh, has been tested by our check routine. And down here, okay. we've actually got the expanded version of that. Uh, which is the actual zip vault we downloaded, which is exactly what we wanted, and that's being returned uh, in the JSON format uh, that we want. Uh, and this will be the versions. Uh, so that seems to have worked. Now we can actually take that JSON. And, uh, the only thing we might want to do is suppress the output from the curl because uh, it's not really required. So we could put a minus s onto the curl command uh, that might be nice to do uh, but for now we'll leave it and uh, let's get the uh, docker command uh, and we'll put its standard output to versions.json and we've cat Okay, so that's the array we were expecting uh, for our versions. Now we can actually take that and we could feed it back in as the versions uh, or version so that our in command can be tested. So if we uh, if we just take that uh, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, replace that array with uh, that. especially pretty but it does mean that hopefully now we can take the same command and so we're running with check we can run it with in and oh, we've got an unbound variable ah yes that's because uh, what value is it expecting in there Uh, oh, the destination directory. Okay, so if we just uh, make a directory temp in there, and then down here, uh, it needs to pass in uh, the current working directory slash temp. Unexpected end of file. Ooh, that's not good. Okay. Actually, what we could do. Um, oh. We're done. Uh, oh. uh, right, so, at line 19. Payloads defined. Oh, un uh, unmatched quote. Uh, oh, I hmm. wonder what my brain was thinking when I did that. Okay, so that's not required. So let's give that a go. Oh, awesome. Mm. That is matched. That's matched. Oh, nah, come on, Mark, wake up. We have to rebuild the image first. And then test. 
921. No such for the retreat. Uh, oh, idiot. Uh, that's because, of course, that direction won't actually exist. Let's do slash 10. There we go. And woo, look at that. That's a good sign. 431 meg, which is the size we're expecting. Okay, so we've now got check and in, both working as expected. Uh, now, the only thing is, this unzip is unwarranted. Uh, in fact, almost, uh, we almost want to leave uh, so we don't want to do that file unzip there because this is a general URI so we're going to delete that and the output file uh, we probably want to leave that uh, now this is an interesting problem because what I want to do is take the uh, file name from the URI as our output and I think that curl put to the standard output if we don't give it a file name. So uh, let's just check whether we can give it Uh, so we can So, write the output to file this in the standard output, fine. Uh, can, um, I don't want to standardize it. Uh, but, Minus remote name certainly look promising. Right, so minus O. Uh, Write the output file to local folder that named like the remote file. Cool. Okay, so that's all we want, isn't it? So back here, what I'm going to do is use minus O. Okay, and that will give us, I think, what we want. Uh, So we have to rebuild it, of course. And then that. Of course, 
a problem with it at the moment is he's just going to exit. Now, of course, one question that we should be looking at is how do we automate the testing of this? Uh, we will think about that later because we're going to look at the build chain for actually building this container automatically. Um, hmm. You drop frames. Oh, why? Right. Uh, okay. So uh, it looks promising. It looks like we're it looks like we're getting what we expected. So okay. So we're going to go with it as is now. Um, I want to get this under version control uh, so that we've got something to uh, a, a sort of baseline uh, now that we've got everything so the thing we actually want to control of course is the assets the docker file we don't need the test files so first of all we'll do a git init here okay and then we can, we can see the files we want to add I want to git add the docker file and uh, the assets directory. Alright, so that's really all we need. Uh, now we're going to also uh, do a readme file. Readme.md, I suppose. And we'll just do a very quick and dirty one for now. Um, uh, provides uh, a UI to build Project, which is to set up a development virtual machine so it works the way I expect okay uh, uh, I'll do for now right uh, do we want to add that uh, that I think is it uh, I'll 
do. Now, of course, what we haven't got at the moment is we haven't got a remote uh, set up. So, going back to uh, here, uh, if we go to the... Uh, do, I, do I want to keep it in the streams project or should... No, I'll create a... Let's have a look. Uh, I think I've got a Docker group already. Here we go, Docker. And we will create a new project called uh, yeah, Black will be fine. Uh, URI resource. And uh, URI resource. Type for use in concourse. Uh, now then, uh, I'll also make it public. Don't need to initialize it, so we'll create that. And back over here, we now need to do our git, uh, oops, git remote add. And uh, oh, uh, that's another thing. Of course, I haven't set up my Git, uh, my Git configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, oh, God, this is another. Another one of the things that I need to sort out. Okay. Uh, because I don't like that out. making a lot of work for myself because I'm going to go and change all of these once I get it sorted uh, and get my own email set up but that's a way away yet uh, okay and now well, we have to do this uh, get to commit amend reset author which will fix the authorship Uh, oh, sorry, if we now do get log, I should say. There we go. Author's been set correctly. Uh, so now we can do our remote add. And the one we want is uh, this thing here. Mm, oh, sorry. Oops. Uh, mine isn't big, isn't it? Yeah. Origin. So we we've got the Git set up now. Then uh, the other thing is, of course, we're going via uh, SSH uh, with this Git protocol. So any attempt to push at the moment will be rebuffed because we don't have uh, the SSH keys. So. Uh, oops, uh, ls tilde slash dot ssh. Okay, so we don't have the uh, my private key. However, we can fix that temporarily um, by uh, uh, now then. Uh, so uh, the one I want is that salty vagrant one just there. So I can do vagrant SCP. Oh, uh, so GitLab salty vagrant and copy that up to the default machine. Uh, home vagrant. SH. 
Oops. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That's not me a gulper. Idiot. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the right machine. And um, that's there we go. Right. Uh, so what should be happening here is we now have the salty vagrant key there. Uh, um, uh, really want config in there. There's all sorts of things. That, this this machine really needs to be set up properly, but this is a temporary machine, so uh, we should be okay. So let's try to get pushed now. Oops. Uh, uh, set upstream. Origin master. Uh, yep. Oops. Uh, uh, okay, let's uh, turn to stop SSH. Oops. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, SSH, that's config. Uh, and in actual fact, we can use. Uh, uh, I suppose I could just SCP. Yeah, I could just SCP the config up and. Oops. Uh, won't do any harm. The only problem is that I think I use a special host name. Uh, So in actual fact, for now, uh, 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 right, so we're finally, we're there. So now we should find. Okay, cool. So we've got that in there. So the next trick uh, is uh, uh, so that's the script under there, and we've started our SSH config. And now we want to put the Docker image into Docker Hub. So let's go over here again. Mm -hmm. We don't need you anymore. Uh, but what we do want to know is okay, how do I add stuff to uh, hub.docker? Uh, and the reason I'm putting it in here is because it's convenient. Uh, so I want to create another uh, another entry in here. Okay. Now I could create another repository and make it private on that, but uh, let's try and do it from the other side, shall we? So we want to we want to try and do it from directly from here because uh, I've got uh, I've got Docker installed. Okay, so I've got everything I need, so I should be able to do a Docker push from here. Uh, I don't think this is logged in though, so if I do docker push vagrant slash URI resource, I think it's going to choke. Oh, I stand corrected. Oh, there we go. Denied. Requested access to the resource is denied. And that's because I'm not logged in. Uh, on this machine. So if I do docker login, uh, 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so username. Mm, and uh, password. Mm, now there's a question. Bear with me while I set everything up. <clears throat> do, do, do. Sorry, Docker. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, and hopefully. Awesome. Mm. Okay. Okay. How to debus without excellent display? Okay, that's a new one. This could be a problem. Okay, right, fine. Never seen this before. Never let it be said we don't investigate. Uh, so, the problem is that, I mean, I can see that setting that display would be fine, but I don't have any X11 displays to write it to, so I'm not quite sure why that's learning about that. Um, Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, is that old chestnut? Oh, okay, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I've seen this before, uh, and it's got nothing to do with X11. Uh, but what I do need to do, though, is I need to change the... Uh, the doc file over here, uh, sorry, not doc file, the vagrant file. Uh, uh, in actual fact, uh, I need to change provisioning main. Uh, I need to change, I need to add in uh, when I add, I suppose, docker, I ought to do it, haven't I? Uh, so when it installs those two. It really ought to also make sure that we've got the new PG2 and pass installed as well. 
Mm. Now, Uh, okay, so we we uh, I changed the main and uh, uh, yeah. So so all all I did uh, was added the two things to be installed and then we ran the vagrant up with provision which which. Basically, we'll just run the provisioning script. Uh, so now those two things should be available. So when I now run this, and uh, of course I need to. And bingo, okay, good. So now if I do the Docker push, There it is. You are a resource. Okay, and we can do, we can do a bit of polish now because uh, yeah, okay, fine with the latest. Uh, we can. Uh, we're not doing any automated builds. Uh, now I don't I don't have a Docker repository associated with this, but what I could do just put in here. Uh, source Docker file. Okay, so we've now got it in the Docker Hub, which means we're now ready for uh, the last part. Uh, the last part of our notes. Um, oops. to set up the actual pipeline uh, and I think uh, how long are we getting going? Not, not that long have we 40 minutes ah, 40 minutes is nothing uh, oh, oh thanks for that um, yeah so uh, with that I think I'm gonna leave today's session it's Sunday dog needs taking for a walk uh, and we will pick this up and work on setting up a simple pipeline. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, on that note, yeah, we'll leave it there for now.